So, okay. Let's start uh, the first lecture of uh, my course, computational modeling of electronic properties of materials. And uh, uh, first lecture, intro into density functional, functional theory. So today I will not tell you about uh, mathematics, about uh, physics, I will tell you uh, what things you can do with uh, uh, density functional theory and uh, uh, in what uh, applications uh, it will be useful for you. Um, first, uh, the problem. Our problem is to get uh, properties of some materials or to create new materials. Uh, we, we are starting from uh, composition. For example, we have uh, natri, uh, so sodium and, and uh, chlorine, natri chlor, uh, or uh, magnesium oxide, or uh, some other composition. And then, in some way, we want to create material. So we know the composition, and we want to create some structure. We want to know how these atoms connect each other. And uh, uh, there are plenty of ways to do this. Uh, you can uh, um, uh, search for some experiment for some experimental data. Uh, take uh, this, uh, for example, X-ray diffraction data and uh, um, made file made file with the structure. Uh, you can uh, use some uh, databases uh, with structures obtained from another methods, not XRD. Uh, you can use your intuition to create uh, uh, to create new structure. Uh, you can uh, use some uh, uh, machine learning or evolutionary methods. I will tell you uh, also a uh, few words about, about these methods, how, how they work. Uh, so um, first uh, step is to create structure from composition. Uh, in uh, our uh, laboratory works, we will use uh, uh, experimental data uh, for structure. For example, we will work with uh, diamond, with uh, uh, titanium uh, uh, diselenite, we will work with uh, ferrum selen and other structures, we will take them from experiment. Um, but uh, uh, in our course, we will work with known materials. If you don't know the structure, you should use something. Ah, okay, you, you can uh, ask questions in Ukrainian or in English uh, anytime you want. What do you mean by composition specifically? Isn't it uh, synonymous with, uh, with structure? You can say crystal structure or crystal composition. Oh, composition is just the name of chemical elements. Just ah. you know that you you will uh, elements that this material composed. To. Yeah, uh, no, for, for example, you have uh, some uh, thing and you know that there should be. Um, Carbon, there should be oxygen, there should be uh, nitrogen, and some other chemical uh, elements, but you don't know how they connect it to each other. So, uh, composition is just, is just uh, name of the chemical elements. Mm -hmm. uh, structure is how these elements connect to each other. So, then, then they connect in some way, and we get structure. And structure is the most important thing in, uh, uh, in material science and uh, in our course, because from structure, we can obtain properties. We can take uh, um, the, the, the main uh, thing we can calculate from structure is um, energy of the material. Uh, we will work, work with ground state energy, so this is the lowest energy. This is the lowest energy of, uh, of material. Um, it's harder to uh, calculate some, uh, um, um, some excited states. So not 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 the lowest energy, but low, uh, but uh, low, uh, the lowest energy of structure we can calculate with density functional theory. So this was low power. Uh, uh, but we uh, we um, so know how of density functional theory was that we can obtain from the structure. Um, uh, the lowest energy of uh, of this material, and then from this energy we can calculate a lot of properties. We can calculate optical properties. We can make some uh, energy. We can plot some energy structure. We can uh, plot uh, um, uh, we, we can plot electron density of this material. 
and a lot of other things. Um, so, okay, uh, you have structure, and you and I just told you how we can uh, uh, use uh, density functional theory to um, to explore it, and we can use uh, a lot of programs. FAO is a program from uh, Dresden, uh, EMW Dresden, where, where I have worked. Uh, was Vienna, Vienna ab initio uh, simulation package. So it was created in uh, um, Vienna, in Vienna University. Uh, by, uh, they has a very huge uh, group which works on WASP. And uh, I think that WASP is the most, uh, is the best program uh, of such kind. But uh, you should uh, pay uh, something like uh, um, 1,000 euro per year to work with WASP. So uh, that's why we will work with Quantum Espresso. Quantum Espresso is also very good, uh, very good uh, program. Um, it's, uh, it was created in Italy in uh, one of the universities, uh, and uh, a lot of scientists working on this uh, program. They work uh, for in some grants, so they don't uh, sell it for money. Uh, and it's uh, open source is their uh, philosophy of these guys, and of course. You can add some machine learning methods. You can add some evolutionary approaches and so on. So, so this this uh, this thing calculations is very very uh, fast growing uh, fast growing science. And you can research research the structure with experiment. I think that you you know how to do it much better than uh, than I. So research methods, experiment and calculations, and uh, um, almost all. Uh, Papers you will see in the internet, uh, uh, they use both and experiment and calculation. So it's not so many um, not so many papers with experiment only or with calculations only. Because uh, we, we can make uh, great things when we, when we combine experiment and uh, computational. Um, so, how uh, experimentalists and computational scientists can uh, work together, how they can collaborate. Um, experiment, though, has some data to explain. So, we made some uh, uh, experiment, we collect some data, and we don't know uh, deeper in this data. So, we, we want to see deeper in this data, deeper than, than our uh, experimental methods can uh, show us. And in this way, a uh, computational scientist can help you. So uh, he can, uh, he or she can make uh, uh, calculations, uh, uh, can, uh, calculations for different states, for different compositions, for different cases, and the, and and can help to explain the thing. And all uh, experimentalists have some ideas to check, and uh, he wants to check these ideas quickly. Not to make a lot of experiments uh, with a lot of uh, uh, which will cost a lot, we will take take a lot of time. But uh, you go to experiment computational scientist, do some DFT guy, and uh, say, uh, okay, I have some uh, this idea. Uh, can you make some root calculations? He will make some root calculations, and you can see um, if your idea is correct or is it wrong, or you may uh, uh, improve something in your in your idea. And from uh, computational scientists, from, from my side of view, um, uh, I can, uh, for example, I have some data to prove. So I made some calculations, and uh, um, but it's only calculations. So it's only model. Model, um, uh, model not always consists with reality, with uh, real physics, and I want to prove this data. Uh, that's why I'm going to experimentalist and I uh, tell him, okay, guy, I have, I have, I have some calculations. Uh, you should make some experiment uh, to prove this thing. Uh, usually, uh, experimentalists will tell it will uh, it will cost a lot of money, a lot of time, uh, and I don't have uh, resources for it, and uh, <laughs> the collaboration will be closed. But uh, but in some but in some cases, he will be uh, interested in this thing. And uh, you you both can make uh, really good uh, uh, you both can make a really, really good paper or a really good work. So it's so uh, it's collaboration for both sides. 
uh, computational scientists need experimentalists, and experimentalists also need computational scientists. I will tell you a few stories from my uh, own experience. Uh, this is uh, um, this article uh, we have uh, published with uh, I have published with guys from uh, uh, Australia. So on, uh, Evan McGray, this guy is professor from Australia. We knew his uh, experience, his uh, PhD student. He, he is originally from Singapore, but he worked in Australia. So the idea was uh, to take. Uh, so these guys they worked with uh, some. Uh, they worked with uh, um, hydrogen storage, so they uh, looking, uh, they have looked for materials that can a lot of hydro uh, they can contain a lot of hydrogen, uh, and they choose uh, uh, zirconium three ferrum for this uh, for the goal, and they wanted to see how this hydrogen migrate migrates in the material. So uh, if we use some experimental uh, experimental techniques. Um, take hydrogen and move it inside. So in which positions and in which way the hydrogen will, uh, will move. And uh, it's uh, a great uh, uh, problem for uh, calculations for DFT and uh, I, I, I've done it. So, so I have created all this, very, all this variance, how, how this hydrogen can migrate in uh, zirconium, zirconium uh, three ferrum. So it's one side. It's one side when experimentalists need some calculations to uh, to prove this, the, their theories. Uh, so they, they had this uh, experiment, they had some uh, data, and they told, uh, okay, but we don't know how it moves inside. It, it, was, uh, it was important for them. And another story is uh, a paper of this year. Uh, so it's a story from another side. When I am as computational scientist, go to experimentalists, and uh, I told them, okay, I have this material uh, predicted with uh, some calculations, and uh, um, this material should tit titanium uh, selen S. So we have uh, titanium diselenide, titanium selen, selen 2. Uh, this uh, um, uh, material with uh, uh, charged density wave. Charged density wave is a particular order of uh, electron in, uh, in the uh, bulk, in the material. And uh, when charged density wave disappears, it's a way to way to uh, superconductivity. So uh, when we uh, make some uh, uh, additional, uh, so when we add some additional items uh, to titanium selen two, and um, uh, this new composition it disappears, charged density wave disappears. So it it may say uh, tell us that uh, we can reach superconductivity with uh, some good uh, with some good. Uh, uh, TC. And uh, it was idea that that if you will not take titanium selen 2, but we will take titanium selen S, so selen, uh, selen and S, sulfur, uh, they are uh, um, they have uh, very similar similar properties. So in periodic tables, uh, table here you can S and uh, right after, uh, right below it, we can selen. So they have very, very uh, close properties. And the uh, uh, a charge density wave disappeared in this material. So I, I had some calculations and uh, they made experiment and we measured all the things we, we wanted. So yeah, I just illustrated you how uh, how this collaboration this, this experimental uh, this experiment works or experimentalists tell us tell us guy I we need uh, some calculations to see how it uh, uh, works inside. Uh, because we just got some plots and we don't know this internal internal structure or i have some idea and i uh, i'm uh, um and my story is uh, rather interesting uh, that uh, for experimentalists to make their experiment and um spend a lot of time and uh, money for it. okay density functional theory um um, here you see the number of papers for the Institute of Functional Theory. Um, and it was, uh, um, so it's a theory from the 1960s. Uh, 1964 is the first uh, paper for uh, the Institute of Functional Theory. And then 19, 1965, 
next paper. So uh, we have uh, two uh, core papers, but but you see, uh, how do you think why we have this? So why as a number of papers which use DFT grows so so quickly exponentially? Mm -hmm. Why why do you think? So uh, you see it from sixties. 1980s, 90s, it was almost zero papers. And now it's like uh, thousands of papers uh, uh, per year. Advanced in computational power? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it, it's uh, uh, simple question. So yeah, uh, around 1990s, uh, compu computers became uh, uh, much power, uh, much much more powerful, and. Uh, um, a lot of people can buy them, a lot of institutes can buy them, and that's why a lot of scientists could work with it, with this functional theory. Before, it was some good theory, but, uh, but yeah, it's good, but we don't have computational time, computational powerful to, to make some, uh, to make some uh, calculations for uh, at the time. And in 1998, here, uh, Walter Kohl uh, got his Nobel Prize in chemistry for uh, basic functional theory development. So there was three guys, Walter Kohl, uh, Pierre Hoenberg, and Lushem, who uh, created this uh, theory, but I don't know why, but uh, uh, only Walter Kohl got this, uh, got this Nobel Prize. Here, he got it here in uh, 30... In thirty-four years after he uh, he uh, got the idea of density functional theory, mm -hmm. so and only when uh, and only when the theory was um, uh, got its uh, uh, exponential growth. So before I, th I think that uh, if not uh, the computer the computer revolution in nineteen nineties, I think uh, this guy would not uh, get his uh, Nobel Prize. So he got it only because we have. So so big uh, number of uh, papers. So so big influence on the uh, on, on the on physics. And uh, about density functional uh, applications, um, we can use it uh, in plenty um, of ways. Um, we can use it for material science, but it's obvious because we're all material scientists. Uh, we can use it for catalysis for chemistry for some chemistry. So um, Walter Kohn got his Nobel Prize in chemistry because um, uh, first uh, uh, really good uh, uh, first really good applications of DFT was in chemistry. Um, you can take one molecule. You can take, for example, uh, H2 H2O molecule. Yeah, uh, it's it's uh, rather small. And you you can use your uh, computer to calculate it. So even in 1990s, um, in 1980s, people got uh, uh, enough uh, computational powerful power to uh, to calculate some uh, small molecules. And that's why uh, a lot of chemi uh, chem chemistry guys used this uh, theory in their work. Uh, and I think in uh, uh, it was one of uh, um, reasons why uh, uh, Walter Kohn got Nobel Prize in, in chemistry. So you can use it in chemistry. You can use it in uh, medicine, in uh, uh, geophysics. And I will tell you about all these um, applications uh, in more details. And of course, uh, a lot of... Uh, um, companies uh, looking for uh, computational scientists. Um, yesterday I searched, uh, I've searched for some uh, positions. So it's a lot of uh, positions in Samsung uh, with uh, a salary like uh, of one, $150,000 per, per year uh, for computational scientists. Um, a lot of uh, um, positions in some medical um, companies like Bayern, like AstraZeneca, they are looking for a uh, computational scientist to calculate these molecules, to create molecules which they use uh, for drugs. What about another applications? Surface science. 
uh, if you use, uh, um, I think you you told me about zinc oxide, so you can use uh, uh, zinc. Uh, you have nano cluster, and you want to see what happens on the surface of this nano cluster. Or you have some crystal, and you want to know what happens on the surface of the crystal. Uh, when you take uh, uh, some crystal, okay, let it be this thing crystal. Uh, you can cut it in a different ways. You can cut it like this. So you will tell uh, you will uh, get this surface. You will cut it like this. You will get this surface. You see, this surface <laughs> differs from this surface. And uh, uh, for for real crystals, uh, we, we see the similar picture. Uh, in real crystals, uh, different surfaces cut it, uh, in different angles will be very different. And uh, with density functional theory, you can calculate how atoms will arrange the structure of uh, uh, of the surfaces. And then you can take some molecules. Um, for example, this is uh, from uh, uh, from this paper H2S adsorption on the alpha from two o three zero zero one surface. So we we uh, call them with uh, three numbers. Three numbers uh, shows the direction of code. Zero, zero, 001 means that we uh, made uh, that we make this code. So so zero zero e x y and in z one. So in z we we will make slice in that direction. Mm -hmm. We can make one 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 surface. One 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 means that we will make it diagonally. And surfaces can be uh, as uh, uh, complicated as you want. Uh, and you take some molecule and you see how it absorbs on the surface, or you see how it dissociates on the surface. And uh, um, uh, Using this functional theory, you can calculate all these things. You can calculate charge transfer from the from some atoms to the surface, or you can calculate charge transfer from some uh, atoms in the surface to this uh, uh, to to this molecule. Um, here you see these things. You see, or oh, it's patriotic colors, uh, yellow and blue. Uh, it's uh, like uh, uh, amount of charge uh, these atoms has on them. And this picture shows uh, charge shows it shows this, yeah. It shows this and you can see how it moves so from uh, from an, one atom to, to another atom. So you, you so you can um, um uh Karbowski who works there uh usually uh, says in his lectures that uh, um if uh, uh God created the bulk then they will create the surface because it's very hard to uh, study the surface with some experimental uh, methods. Uh, you should make it very, very clean. You should use very, very high uh, vacuum to um, remove all waste from the surface. It's really hard. And uh, even in this ideal conditions, you can uh, fail. But with recreations, you can uh, uh, create these ideal conditions in your computer and then check with uh, uh, in experiment. Basic functional theory is also uh, useful for catalysis. Um, here you see some uh, reaction from another paper. So all, the, all these uh, pictures from, from real papers. Uh, you see some reaction and these guys, they uh, took um, some uh, structures of Z, cuprum, 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 O, N, N, cuprum, and so on. And then create their energy, and they calculate reaction paths of uh, uh, of this uh, of this nano cluster. So that's why uh, I told you that nano clusters is good uh, um, object for calculations because they're not huge. So this nano cluster, this nano cluster, and so on. And you can use it for catalysis. You can use it for chemistry in a lot of ways. Uh, you can use it uh, in uh, um, some industry uh, to create uh, batteries. You have uh, anode and you have cathode. Um, atoms from, uh, and here you see some, uh, you have some lithium atoms. So um, these atoms goes here 
and uh, you see, you, you, you can, uh, and they can go inside, inside the cathodes. And you should calculate all this, all this pathways. You should calculate uh, how, how much energy it needs to bind with the uh, uh, cathodes, to bind with these materials. You can, uh, you can simulate different, uh, you can simulate different anodes and cathodes. So uh, for anodes, uh, as I now uh, usually use, uh, um, they usually use uh, graphite or graphene. And uh, for cathode, they use some combinations. You see here is some graphene, here is some another structure. I don't know what is it. And uh, here is it too. So you have a question? So you can create all the things. You can calculate all this. Uh, um, uh, you can create all, all these energies, all these reactions before you will make this uh, uh, battery. Yeah, okay. What, what is the use of this density functional theory? Um, what is it exactly? So, you mean, you mean what's inside? This uh, uh, three words. Yes. What is this? It's the topic of <laughs> next lectures. So uh, today I want just to uh, tell you how great the theory is, and then uh, in, in next uh, next week we'll start uh, um, uh, talking about the functional theory with uh, equations, with uh, physics. Um, so okay, um, in a few words, it's uh, it's a way to uh, solve Schrodinger equation. In the uh, density functional theory, we take uh, some uh, system of equations and we substitute Schrodinger equation with this system of equations. Mm -hmm. um, they are not uh, exactly similar, similar, but we say that okay, if we will uh, uh, if we will solve this system of equations, we will get results which should be the same as uh, if we will uh, solve Schrodinger equation. But of course, we have some problems. We have some problems that uh, um, uh, we have uh, some range of errors. And uh, some of errors, uh, I think they couldn't be uh, removed. So uh, you, you, we usually have, have some, some simulation errors because it's a, it's a model. So model, uh, Schrodinger equation sh uh, sh describes life. Um, this functional theory is approximation for Schrodinger equation and we can solve this approximation with some, with some errors, with some, uh, uh, with some errors, of course, and we should match this, our solution with, uh, with reality. And why use the word, the word density? Uh, density because uh, um, uh, Schrodinger equation uses uh, uh, psi function and psi function can, uh, um, so uh, in, in, psi, in psi, psi function we can, see a lot of coordinates, a lot of, uh, so psi function has a lot of information. Uh, it depends on uh, um, coordinates of each electron, of each uh, nuclei. Uh, it depends on each atom. It depends on, uh, um, it depends on the uh, um, velocity of each electron or, or each atom in this composition. So it has a lot of information we don't, we don't know. Um, this functional cell, okay? So how we get then uh, this system of equations? We take a shared equation and we say, okay, we will not with, we will not work with a uh, psi function, but we will not with a uh, psi function squared. So we wor work with a uh, uh, quadratic polynomial function, psi function, uh, and uh, we work with uh, uh, and psi function squared is electron density. Electron density. Uh, hmm? Module squared, yes. And electron density, it depends only from three coordinates, from x, y, and z, because it's, it's something which located uh, somewhere in the, uh, somewhere in the, our world, not in Hilbert space, on somewhere. It, it locates somewhere here. And we need only x, y, and z. We don't need thousands of coordinates to describe C function. We need only three coordinates to describe uh, um, to, to describe uh, um, this electron density. Okay, we finished with batteries. We can uh, work with if you don't uh, like batteries, you can work with solar cells. 
uh, you can uh, um, uh, um, very popular material for solar cells is perovskite. So perovskite uh, is a target for calculations with density uh, functional theory, mm -hmm. and you calculate how uh, you you calculate, uh, um, for example, uh, uh, how much uh, how much light you need, how much photons you need to uh, get excited states of this material. So to to get electrons from this material, and uh, then these electrons go to uh, to your homes to somewhere if you need. This. So. Um, People who study theoretically solar cells, they create such heterostructures. Here's aurum, here's spiro or metal, I don't know what is it. Here's some material, here's another material, another material, and there will be the sun. So sun shines, uh, photons get here, they go over all this, uh, all these materials, and you get some electricity. And all these things you, you can also calculate with uh, DFT and people make it. So they they uh, calculate um, all these parameters. Biochemistry. Um, I told you that uh, uh, some um, phar pharmaceutical companies are looking for um, computational scientists. Uh, here's one uh, work from COVID era. So these guys wanted to uh, create some uh, drug delivery, some drug delivery service. So they wanted uh, to uh, to use folians as uh, part as uh, drug delivery particles. So they uh, doped them with some metal, with some transitional metal, and then they told that okay, this uh, drug favipiravir can connects to this transition metal of fullerene and you can uh, use this drug to uh, to cure covid and uh, uh, they made a lot of calculations you see so you see here simulations you, you see here uh, simulations of fullerenes this uh, bucket balls uh, of uh, carbon uh, where they use chromium titanium uh, ferrum nickel Sink and other things, uh, and they saw how uh, this drug favipiravir connects to this to this material, and they can say, okay, we should synthesize, for example, this thing because it has uh, best connection. It's 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 only one example of how uh, it's only one example of how it works, how how uh, uh, this biochemistry, uh, how DFT works in biochemistry. Another example, mechanical properties. You can also calculate some mechanical properties. In, in our lectures, we will, uh, in the laboratories, we will uh, calculate uh, electronic properties. But if you work in some uh, engineering sphere, you can, you need uh, to create this. So this is uh, uh, some uh, uh, three-dimensional code in GPA of gigapascals. Showing the magnitude and anisotropy, anisotropy of the materials Young modulus. So I hope you know what is Young modulus. Um, and here you can see uh, the anisotropy of this Young modulus for uh, material from experiment. And uh, here you see different simulations with different uh, um, uh, with different DFT setups. How we can make this simulation and then to make something to, to, to create some buildings to create some uh, materials from from these materials with uh, with uh, known uh, mecha mechanical properties photonics in photonics we need to know how some uh, doping uh, affect on uh, how, how some doping will affect on uh, its uh, uh, optical properties. For example, we take uh, some material, like this material, it's molybden S2. We add some, if add some uh, atoms to it, dope, doping it with some, uh, with some atoms. 
And then we see if so if we will um, shine with some light in it, what will happen? So maybe maybe it will release some uh, some energy. Uh, maybe it will absorb some energy. Uh, and uh, it's interesting. To, and then we take uh, different materials, combine them to see to see what happens if we if we will combine uh, th these materials. And and uh, according to electronic structure. So uh, my course uh, title is calculation of electronic structures of materials. And uh, from electronic structure, we can tell a lot of uh, uh, information about material. And uh, the most obvious information is whether this material will be semiconductor or it will be metal or it will be insulator. So uh, we will. Um, mm, what such uh, uh, we will put some uh, such graphs um, then in uh, in our labs, and we will see um, we we can say for example we can say for atom of molecule uh, how uh, electrons uh, so where the electrons are how they moving in this uh, atomic uh, orbitals um, when we combine uh, this atom we get molecule but here is H two molecule. And uh, you see that it got uh, harder, so it's uh, more difficult to to uh, we have uh, not four levels, but we have eight levels, and it's harder. But and then if we will combine a lot of such atoms, what we will get? We will get such lines. We will not get such uh, uh, discrete things, discrete orbitals. We will get such uh, uh, lines, and they can be the spots can be very very difficult. And uh, uh, making the spots, we can say, for example, if it's insulator, so if it has a uh, huge band gap, or it has moderate band gap, and we can uh, uh, which uh, compare to um, thermal um, thermal moving. So it will be a, a semiconductor. Uh, then we can dock semiconductor. So we can you we can remove this uh, atom and move another atom on its position and see how how this spot will change. So what will change? What will be changed? Maybe maybe this uh, uh, maybe this gap becomes smaller and maybe we can make some uh, metallic uh, phases in this in the semiconductor. Then we can see what is metal. So how how metal. Uh, Will be um, uh, so in semiconductors, all the all electrons are here in this in this blue area because we don't uh, um, and uh, only in uh, we, when on, only when we get some uh, heat to the material, this electrons moves here. In metal, electrons are here and here, so they can move uh, freely in in the material. We also make such uh, uh, such plots. And uh, example, example uh, this uh, epopoeia with LK ninety nine. I think you heard about this material. Um, it was some uh, research group from Seoul, South Korea. They told that they got a superconductor at uh, uh, normal temperature. And normal, and I don't remember. I don't remember the pressure. Maybe the pressure also was normal. And uh, um, uh, it was only preprint, so it was not uh, um, paper which uh, was revised by another scientist. But uh, journalist became uh, uh, journalist created a lot of articles that uh, it's new era in, for humanity. We can make a lot of cool things with uh, with this uh, uh, material and. Uh, uh, in a few days, it was really less than a week after explosion of this uh, news. Um, some guy, Simeon Griffin, I don't know. I don't know from where he is. From I don't, I don't remember exactly. From from some American university, he made such calculations. So he just uh, checked um, whether can be this material be a superconductor or not. He. Uh, got some structure, so we will also we, we also will work with such uh, uh, things. So we will also work with uh, structures which will be looked like this, but uh, they will be different structures. 
So he made some uh, calculations. Then he got uh, DFT calculations. He got uh, some uh, band structure plots. So here is band structure. Uh, from this plot, we can say um, a lot about electronic properties. And uh, we will um, plot a lot of such graphs in our work. And we will plot a lot of such graphs in our work. It's those density of states. You see, here you can see um, how, uh, here, here you can see where the, uh, the electrons locate. OP, so it's uh, oxygen P orbital. Uh, it's green, so it, it located here. Then going to Fermi surface, uh, you know what Fermi level, don't know what Fermi level. So Fer Fermi level is the highest energy of electrons at zero, zero temperature. Uh, so we see that at Fermi level, we have OP, we have cuprum D, and uh, so we, we, we see we, we have such uh, amount of uh, uh, electron states. So it, it, there is some probability for electrons to be on this Fermi level. And this probability, so this thing is uh, one of uh, um, predictor, predi predictors of superconductive properties. So um, not usually when, uh, so material can have such dose with some states, with some electrons on Fermi level, but it cannot be a superconductor. Uh, but if it has such states, it can be superconductor. And this guy uh, made uh, uh, some calculations. He got uh, density of states for this material. He got um, band structure. He told, okay, we have such line on, uh, uh, we, we have such uh, flat line on the Fermi level. Flat line. What what means superconduction? Superconduction uh, uh, means uh, that you have uh, electrons which don't uh, change their energy while moving uh, in uh, in the crystal. If you have um, this is energy uh, um, this is energy diagram. For example, this uh, electron has lower energy here than than here. Here electrons have a lot of energy. Here they have not a lot of, uh, not enough energy to move. To, uh, through this band gap. So here is band gap. We, we need three electron volts to get electrons from here to here. And if you have such a uh, flat band, you can say that around Fermi uh, surface, the electrons can move not using the energy. So it's a good predictor of, uh, it's good predictor of uh, uh, superconductivity. And this guy calculated such thing. He thought, okay, you see, it's not it's not ideally flat. You also see that it, it's, it's not ideally flat. You can see here, here, but it can be superconductor. But then, uh, 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 ah, here, here is uh, this this plot is zoomed. This plot, this 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 section, it took this section and zoomed into this plot. You see zero one. Minus zero four zero one minus zero four, and you see that it's not ideally flat. It looks like flat here, so it looks like it can have superconductivity. But if you will look at it, uh, at this at this band uh, more uh, precisely, you will see that it's not ideally flat, and maybe it's not superconductor. And it will, uh, and then uh, some experience, some another, another groups, they told that this material is not superconductor. But you can make such calculations in a week if you have uh, uh, enough uh, uh, computational power, and you can uh, publish some preprint like this and make some make some decision in this uh, in this. Uh, uh, in this question, I want to say to, I want to say hype question. I think it's hype question. And the last slide of my today's presentation um, is another uh, way of using DFT. It's a way of using uh, of creating new new materials. You need uh, to uh, at the beginning. I told you that you can now composition, and then from composition you can get structure. And then from structure, you can create all other things. 
So uh, before I uh, sh show you some properties which you can calculate from uh, from the structure, but now how we can get from composition the structure? We can use some uh, machine learning methods or some evolutionary methods. So it's uh, uh, mm, from a paper about evolutionary algorithms. Uh, you can you can see uh, this um, mm, this plot. Uh, I think it's beautiful. It's a plot. Uh, it's a six dimensional uh, plot, and ev every every dot is some energy. So every dot is some structure with some energy. You, if I can take this dot, and here will be some structure of some material. I don't, I don't remember what materials here, but uh, it's some material. So some some structure and some energy. And here we get some energy. And the uh, um, blue color re refers uh, uh, lowest energy. So it's uh, um, if material has lower energy. Um, it has more possibility in uh, it has more possibility in in nature to exist, uh, and with higher energy it has lower possibility. For example, um, uh, graphite is the lowest uh, energy structure for carbon in uh, in nature, and diamond has has uh, higher energy. So uh, diamond has the lowest energy at uh, uh, I don't know at some huge pressure. I don't, I don't remember what pressure, but at our uh, normal conditions, it's it has not the uh, lowest energy. What does it mean? It means that if we will hit diamond, it will mm -hmm. uh, disappear. So it will uh, uh, it will be destroyed. It hit like uh, nine hundred kelvins or something something like this. So some materials has. Uh, lower energy, and we want to find them. We want to find this material. So we, we have, um, for example, we have some uh, atom types: titanium, titanium, and silicon. Um, and we are looking for all possible combinations of titanium and silicon. Um, we can create infinite number of this combination. So it's not. Uh, um, it's not good to make uh, such things. So it's it's not good to make uh, infinite number of some uh, um, uh, of some structures. Uh, we should uh, uh, move smarter. So we should take um, um, we can we can create uh, okay okay we can create some um, initial population of those materials. Uh, not infinite number, but uh, for example, hundred number of different combinations of uh, these two atoms, titanium and selenium. Then, then we get this hundred structures. We can, we will calculate with DFT energies of the structures, and we take some part of uh, uh, best energy structures with, with the lowest energy. Then we apply to them some uh, mathematical operations like mutation. We will move some atoms. In the structures, and we will create new population. And in this new population, uh, structures will be more reasonable than in first in than in first random population. And using uh, and uh, in this way, we will search all this uh, energy energetical landscape. So this 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 plot is energy energetic energetical landscape. We have for each dot we have uh, different structures. It's infinite number of the structures, but we want to find the only one structure with the lowest energy. That's why we can not use we can uh, we can uh, make very stupid move and calculate each uh, dot, and we will uh, it, it will take all the time. But we can make, for example, uh, one hundred random uh, one hundred totally random uh, structures, and we. Uh, get this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, and maybe this dot from first uh, from first population. Then we will apply some uh, mathematical tools on this on the structures, uh, and uh, we will focus on the best, for example, on this dot and on this dot. We will focus, and we don't need this dot because it has the highest energy, and uh, maybe we don't need this 
dot because it also has the highest energy. And then we create next population with which will be focused around this area, around this good area, around area with good energies. And in some uh, reasonable amount of steps, so we will create new population. Then we can create energy of this population. We will create from this population next population, and so on and so on. And we will get some our best structure in this in this uh, region. So this this is one of the ways how we can um, from composition get the structure. If you don't know uh, any other information, for example, we now only uh, name of atoms titanium and cylinder in selenium. Uh, and uh, this is what I've done uh, in that paper for titanium selenium S, which I told you. So I use I use this method to to make the, that crystal, which was then synthesized. Okay, for today I think we can finish if you don't have the questions. Oh, I see that uh, Fedor uh, has also connected. Uh, yeah, I wrote I a question. I wrote a question in the chat. Oh, about okay. I will see. Uh, dynamic density functional theory, and Navier Navier Stokes equations. Uh, okay, I see it. Yeah, that, that that was my my previous question from our conversation. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I found some applications of DFT for fluid dynamic simulations called dynamic density functional theory. Is it possible to cover uh, this in our course? Um, I think uh, I, I I will read about this thing, but uh, um, I think uh, okay, I, I will read it. I, I I don't know if it's if it's possible, uh, but if uh, it don't demand. Uh, it, it don't need uh, a lot of uh, um, computational power, uh, and if it supports by quantum espresso, we, we can uh, make something. Uh, tak. Okay. Prove that DDFT can be ah. So it's it's some uh, uh, just it's some quotation from yeah yeah from the article. So it was okay uh, with sound. Yes. Uh, Yes. So, another questions. So for today, we can stop our lecture. Thank you for your attention.